Hello everyone and welcome back to Travels with Travis. I'm finally back and I'm within the confines of Saguaro National Park to talk about the most amazing tree in Arizona. <laughs> I chose to start with this one. This one looks like it's bowing. It's like, thank you, thank you, I'm a giant cactus. But let's hit the intro and we'll get started. Welcome to Travels with Travis. Life in Tucson, Arizona is not for everyone. We're surviving harsh desert temperatures, furious Tucson thunderstorms, and confronting local and deadly predators who inhabit our land. Please join me and my family on our adventures. I am Travis, and I am alive in Tucson. So today, guys, we're going to be talking about my favorite plant in the world, the saguaro cactus. And I'm going to film it right in front of this one because it has that perfect fork like you see in all the movies. But the facts that you hear today are going to be a little different from some of the other ones that you've probably heard before. There's a lot of those stereotypical ones. They're big and blah, blah, blah. But we got some interesting ones. Okay. And as the title suggests, someone has died from a saguaro cactus. Wouldn't that be interesting on your tombstone? Death by saguaro. Basically, in February of 1982, a 27-year-old man named David Grunman went out shooting uh, in Mount Pleasant, Arizona with a buddy of his. And the purpose was to shoot at cacti, which I don't know why you do that. I mean, I think isn't that like illegal to harm a cactus in Arizona? I'm pretty sure it is, but we will get to that. Anyways, they approached a 26 foot tall saguaro and he basically pulled out his shotgun and started shooting at one of the arms. Now these arms on the cacti can be around even a thousand pounds. So if it was like 26 foot high, a big old arm, that's pretty heavy. Well, he decides to shoot at it, not intelligent. However, the cactus attacked back. The four foot arm, which is nearly the size of a person, <laughs> fell off and crushed him to death. Talk about a painful death with all that weight coming down on you and all the needles penetrating your body. Holy cow, that must not have been fun, nor fun to witness your friend getting killed in that way. Now, another person almost died from a cactus, and this would almost be worse because it'd be really painful, but about 40 years later, there was a gentleman who was attacked by a cactus in Yuma in July of 2012, Basically, he had a 16 foot tall cactus fall on him oh, and over a hundred needles stabbing his body. You want to talk about painful? That was painful. However, he was able to recover from the freak accident with a lot of physical therapy. So he's walking around, he's fine, but man, having a cactus fall on you, especially with the needles, ouch. Now we're going to talk about another interesting fact that not a whole lot of people know. So I lived in Texas for most of my life. And I always kind of laughed when I would go to someone's house or see Texas merchandise, and you always have a saguaro cactus on that merchandise. It looks cool. I know it's the symbol of the Southwest, but there's no saguaro cactus in Texas, of course. There, you can't find one anywhere. However, surprisingly, I saw this article on Google that was recommended to me, and there are two saguaro cactus in Texas. There is a town called Langtree, Texas, where there is two giant saguaro. Weird. So as we all know, the saguaro grow exclusively in the Sonoran Desert because of the conditions here. It is perfect for their growth. Anywhere else, it would be very difficult because the cactus do not grow over 4,000 feet or three to 4,000 feet elevation because they will die from the freezing cold. So in this town in Langtree, uh, as the article says, this gentleman was pulling through and heard stories about saguaro here when he knew that there was none in Texas. But he did approach a woman on one of his trips that was in the yard where this one of the saguaro was standing and he was like, hey, where did this saguaro come from? Like, how did this get here? And basically she said a man was selling saguaros door to door. She took the seed and decided to plant it in her front yard. Now, it's interesting because the conditions must be just perfectly right for this saguaro to exist in Texas, or two of them, because there is another, but interesting that somebody going door to door selling cactus in Texas, like, knock, 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 excuse me, miss, would you like to buy a saguaro cactus? They only grow in the Sonoran Desert, but you can plant one out here. And she did. So, 40, 50 years later, there's a cactus in Texas. Two, actually. Now, another interesting tidbit that a lot of people might already know is the tallest saguaro cactus ever was in Cave Creek, Arizona. 
and it was 78 feet tall. I mean, can you imagine 78 feet? Like that's nothing to shake a stick at. That is really big. Uh, it was probably around 150 to 200 years old. That is about how long they can live. And that, that's just really dope. It was in Cave Creek, but it got toppled in a windstorm. I'm not sure now where the record is for the tallest cactus. I believe I heard it was in the confines of Saguaro National Park on the east side. But either way, 78 feet, that's crazy. Now, as I said, the saguaro cactus are exclusive to the Sonoran Desert, and, except for those two in Texas, of course, which you're mostly gonna find that cutting through mostly Arizona, a teensy little bit of California, and through the state that is southern to us in Mexico, Sonora, you will find them there as well. They are exclusive to the Sonoran Desert because the conditions in the Sonoran Desert are perfect for their survival. Every year, a lot of people are like, oh no, it's, I hope it's raining enough for the cactus. Well, the cactus have a really large taproot that goes deep into the ground to collect any groundwater, and the roots spread out over the surface about three inches deep. It can, they can spread out as far as the cactus is tall. So if a cactus is 20 foot tall, they might have a 20 foot root system that extends all throughout in order to collect any water. And Tucson does get decent amount of rain from year to year. Some years it's not as good as others, but it is enough for them to survive because they are everywhere. Now the thing is, if they live somewhere where it rained too much, the thing is the cactus is a giant sponge. It soaks up every last bit of water. And I heard a story one time of too much rain falling and cactus just toppling over because they are sucking up every inch of water. And sometimes if they get too much water, they will topple and fall over. So they need just the perfect amount of rainfall in order to survive the harsh summers and survive period without getting too heavy and toppling over because these things can weigh up to one to two to three tons. That is crazy. Now, as far as the temperatures, like I said, if anything is below freezing, it can kill the cactus and we don't want that. When you're on the way to Mount Lemmon, actually, there is a point where the cactus just cease. You'll see tons of them and then bam, they're gone. And that's why I said it's really 3,000 feet, but on the way to Mount Lemmon, there's some around 3,500, close to 4,000 where you can see a couple plants here and there, which is kind of interesting, but they're able to survive. They're probably just right at that level. But every summer, I hear a lot of people like, oh man, it's just so brutally hot out there. And the cactus probably just hate it. They're miserable. But the thing is, the cactus love the heat. That's why they live here. They need those warm, hot conditions. They need the lack of rainfall because otherwise they get too much and fall over. So basically it's a perfect mixture here in Arizona for their survival. And that's what makes Arizona special. It's the only place on earth besides, you know, a little bit of Mexico and California that you can find these incredible plants and people come all over the world to Arizona to see them because Tucson has the highest concentration of saguaro anywhere in the world. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention is it is illegal to cut down, harm, or remove a saguaro cactus without a permit. So obviously if something needs to be built, there's saguaro in the way, they do have to get permits and such to remove the cactus, but your average show blow, if I had a chainsaw right now and I wanted to cut this down, which I would never do, it is illegal and it is very punished. It is a felony. Uh, they are protected here. I'm not sure about what plants that are in California, what the laws are protecting them there or down in Mexico, but here in Arizona, on their land, it is illegal to harm them or cut them down with exceptions due to construction and such, which do require permits. Now, why anybody would want to cut one down? I don't know. Why would anybody want to walk up to a cactus with a gun and start shooting it? I don't know either. I just say, look, they're beautiful. It's best to leave them alone. It's the spirit of the Southwest and Arizona. Come down here, enjoy them, take pictures, but leave them alone. They're hanging out here. They're older than you are, a lot of them, because they can grow to be 150, 200 years old. So they've seen a lot. They just want to be left alone. But hey guys, that was just a quick cactus factus. Just wanted to talk about my favorite plant a little bit more in depth. Hopefully you learned something because most of the facts that I hear online, it's kind of the same stuff, but hey, it was interesting to learn that somebody died from it. Somebody got a cactus fall on them and all the other things that I mentioned. So appreciate you for joining me today here in Saguaro National Park. We'll catch you next time on Travels with Travis. I'm Travis, the host, and I'm alive in Tucson. We'll catch you next time. Last thing I wanted to mention though real quick was I want to thank today's sponsor, Dynaco, the best in dinosaur gasoline, help you win a piston cup, and makes you go, ka-chow.